hello. And welcome to another booktube video from me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Books. How are you? It's been a minute and it's about to be another minute. So it's all happening. <laughs> I've got life changes coming out my ear holes at the moment. So I'm going to take a bit of time off. I had already planned to take um, June off. It coincides with a little break that we're having on the All About the Archers podcast. So I thought it would be nice to have a break and a rest away from, from everything. But I've got some stuff going on you can see i'm fine but there's stuff going on that requires my brain power um and my presence as well um so yeah so i've taken a bit of time off so today is my um may reading wrap up so i'm going to talk about the books that i've read in the month of may and then i'm just going to pop off for a little bit um and then you'll see me towards the end of june hurrah back and my brain will be in much more functioning order hopefully by that point um and yeah so that's the plan i'm fine i reiterate again i'm fine um and yeah just need to put my brain power elsewhere for a bit let's get on with it so the books that i read in the month of may one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve books in the month of may pretty good pretty pretty good um i actually realized that i haven't looked back at my reviews so let's see if i can remember them um as i go i've only got four here again still really go riding high with the um with the library book. So the first one was Butter by Asako Yuzuki. Um, I gave this 2.5 stars. What I will say about it, and I remember feeling this, is that this was very much too long. It's a really big, chunky Japanese translated fiction sort of crime but not really a crime book about a woman who is a journalist and is interviewing um, uh, another woman who is in prison. Um, and she's in prison for the crime of um, making her partners um, kill themselves or sort of set there's suspicions around her. Um, and there's lots to do in here with food and there's lots to do in here with sort of like misogyny in Japan and things like that and fat phobia and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed, enjoyed is a word, weird word to use for that, but I found that all very um, educated, educational and interesting. But yeah, like I say, it was long and like way too long like half too long so i think maybe if it had been shorter it would have been a bit more snappy and it would have kept me a bit more interested but yeah not great but absolutely beautiful front cover keep seeing it in all the front windows of uh, bookshops independent and otherwise having a lovely time so yeah um it was just fine next up was an audiobook i listened to and that's good material by dolly alderton quite enjoyed this this gave me sort of um nick hornby vibes i read a lot of nick hornby when i was younger and trying to get myself into my reading groove um and something i always thought when i was reading nick hornby and i wonder if i feel the same now because i haven't read a nick hornby for a long long time um was when nick hornby wrote women i used to think oh yeah he's he's done women quite well here now i wonder how i'd feel about that now but i was reading it reading Dolly Alderton having written a man thinking oh she's done men quite well here hasn't she whether or not that is the truth who knows but I did enjoy this sort of like we're hearing this whole story about this um this guy who's middle-aged he's a comedian and him and his girlfriend have broken up and you're hearing about this sort of breakup and him sort of getting back in the dating scene and having to depend on other people because he hasn't got this sort of emotional net that his girlfriend Jen was before um and sort of like where she'd pick, pick him up all the time and and like you start almost like siding with him a little bit and you're like oh poor him Andy and I hope everything works out for him and then Dolly Alderton does an absolute rug pull from underneath your feet and um plops Jen in as the last uh, the last chapter and you're like really well done there because then you and then like I mean as a woman I wonder what it would be like reading it as a man but like as a woman I was like actually yeah I get it um but yeah I thought it was very very readable um, my friend Emma also read it and she said I think she said she read it in like two sittings as well so very readable pleasingly we bought this for David's sister for her birthday so hopefully she enjoyed it as much as um I did but yeah three stars gave it very much enjoyed it next up because it was Daphne de Maury May I was reading quite a lot of Daphne du Maurier stuff, although that only accounts for two books on this old wrap-up. I've still got three books on the go. Oh, four, including, yeah, four, four Daphne du Maurier books on the go that I will finish in June. Daphne du Maurier June? 
no. Um, but the first one I read was House on the Strand by Daphne du Maurier and I very, very, very much enjoyed this. I gave it 3.5 stars. Um, again, it didn't quite reach to the dizzy heights of a four star. Like if you get a four star from me, that's impressive. If you get a five star, wow. Um, but it didn't quite reach the four stars. I think maybe because I found a, a little bit meandering in, in times. But yeah, so we're following a young chap, um, Dick Young, and he has this sort of special relationship with a professor called Magnus Young and they, they understand each other. It's alluded to that they're in a, in, a, in a romantic relationship with each other, but it's alluded to that they're very, um, that's alluded to, but that he's very much in Magnus's hands. And Magnus has invented this sort of um, elixir that you can take that will transform you back into the 17th century. 14th century. Um, this is set in, I don't actually know when it's set, but it feels quite modern. So I don't know when it's set, but yeah, like I said, it feels quite modern. And when you take this elixir, um, it takes you back to 14th century Cornwall. And Dick does this as a favour to Magnus. He tries this little serum and he finds himself getting addicted to this serum and the um, and addicted to the lives of the people in the 14th century. Now, he can't interact with any of these people. He's merely a voyeur, a bit like watching EastEnders or something. But he finds himself getting very, very invested in the, these people's lives to the detriment of his actual life um and there's themes in there about addiction and um it, uh, his relationship with his uh wife seems to suffer because of the addiction and he can't really tell her what's going on and would she even understand and yeah there's just lots of stuff I, I really like the sort of time travel in here it reminded me a little bit of um what happens in his dark materials so they sort of he take the elixir at one point. He, it, this is all happening in Cornwall, by the way. And also, now I've read a few books by Daphne du Maurier. The same names, like Grenville, is used in this book and is used in The King's General, which I'm reading at the moment. And a lot of Tiradreth is another place. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's also features in this book. There's a lot of, like, featuring the same names in and people and places. Um, but anyway, he would take the serum, so say, like, by the, the, the train line, um, and then it would transform him to that exact spot in the 14th century, which just reminded me a little bit of sort of like jumping between universes in his dark materials. But yeah, I had a great time with this. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm surprised it hasn't been made into anything. I feel like it would be great. Um, but yeah, I, I very much enjoyed, I wasn't as invested in the 14th century characters as Dick was, and I was much more invested in hearing like what his wife would find out when she's, he's stood her up again or hasn't met her from the train station because he's out taking these, this lovely juice that's going to make him go back to the 14th century. But yeah, really enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. If you're into Daphne du Maurier, I think you'd like this. I mean, of course you would. Next one. She's dropped it. Next up is a five star, but it is also a reread, and it is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I listened to the audiobook of this. Every time I listen to it, I think, bloody hell, it's so good. And the sort of unfurling of this story. So you're following a nameless narrator, very clever literary device, um, and her as a companion to an older American lady. <coughs> and they're abroad. And while they're abroad, her, the, this older lady falls unwell and she has to sort of entertain herself for a few days. And she comes into contact with uh, Maxim de Winter, who is sort of very confident and full of bravado. And um, she takes a liking to him and he seemingly takes a liking to her. And then they end up getting married and she goes back to his house called Mandalay. That's where the famous line, last night I dreamt I went to Mandalay again. Um, and when... Our narrator is there you're finding out you're you're she's sort of like settling settling into the role of mrs de winter now maxim was married beforehand to somebody called rebecca um and that's where the name of the book comes from and then you're finding out about rebecca through living in mandalay and what the star thought of her and what surrounding characters thought of her and will our narrator ever be able to live up to her memory and what was she like and is she as good as she seems and all of this sort of thing so yeah and then the sort of last hour of it because I've, I've read it a couple of times but the more more recently I sort of listened to the audiobook of it is just heart in your throat type stuff like what is going to happen I mean Maxim is vile yeah. <laughs> like I really have not liked Maxim this time around um but yeah the book itself is great and I've watched both the films I've watched the um the very old one. Oh my god the what is his name? That really old... David, who... 
Who um, directed The Birds and Rebecca? Oh, um, oh my god. I know. It's literally on the tip of my tongue. There'll be people going wild. Ay, ay, ay. Something cock? Hitchcock! Uh, Alfred Hitchcock, yeah. well done. Oh my god. Come on. Told you, my brain's being used elsewhere. Um, I've watched that film and the more recent one, which stars Lily James. I think they're both good. So there, there we go, enjoyed it. Next up, I had the most blissful day, and I will link the vlog of me reading these down below, but I had a day where I took the day off of work and I watched all of the first half of Bridgerton, which by the way was top notch, Bridgerton series three, the first half. <sighs> Didn't realize I fancy um, Colin as much as I did. Didn't realize I fancy a Colin at any point. Um, but I, I watched that and I also read all five volumes of Heartstopper. So I've got volumes one and three here. One and five, sorry. Two, three and four I got out from the library. Um, I'd read one, two and three before and very much enjoyed them but hadn't visited. And also had seen the TV series so knew that some stuff that was coming up and had seen that. But hadn't watched, uh, read four or five. And four and five in particular, I mean one, two and three were great. I've given them five stars, they're brilliant. But four and five in particular, if I can give them something of five star plus, I would do. Four in particular, my God, it really left me all a quiver and all upset and like, but hopeful as well. There's a lot of themes in here. So it's about Nick and Charlie. That's who these two people are. This is volume five. Um, that's to who these two people are. Two young lads in love. That's covered in one of the books. And uh, the first sort of few to the first volume is like they're meeting. Nick doesn't realise that he, um, he he thinks he's straight, so when he finds out that he's bisexual, that's a real surprise to him. And him and Charlie sort of negotiate in their early feelings, which is just so lovely. And it almost like it's almost sort of like cardboard cutout for what the series is. So if you've watched the TV series, then you'll love the books as well because it's like it's almost scene for scene, particularly the kissing scene. It's just um, and then the books sort of progress with um, them coming out to their friends and coming out to their parents and then them being in a relationship and then wanting that to take to the next step and wanting to say I love you and stuff like that and then things sort of get a bit more um, serious in books four and five. Um, there will be spoilers for four and five so go away and I'll call you back when we get there. Um, go away now. Um, and throughout the, first, the early books um, it's alluded that Charlie has an eating disorder and that is really um, deep dived in uh, volume four along with some mental health issues he's having and self-harm. Um, so much so that he ends up having an impatient stay. And it's about, uh, it, it's mainly told from, from Nick's point of view really. Nick, his boyfriend, who he, he's, he's um, left at home while he's, having, while he's on an impatient stay. I've made it sound like he's on, away on holiday, but like, and Nick having to cope with that. And Nick always being somebody who um, could find a solution in anything and would be the big, sort of like looking after people and give them a hug and make things feel better and knowing that that isn't going to cut it here so that was like really interesting to read about from a teenage boy, boy's point of view and also just sort of like negotiating like the other stuff that comes with mental health issues and how that affects the people around you but yeah really really beautifully done and a completely different tone to the rest of the books like it still wasn't like dreary, dreary, everything's hopeless, but it was really, it, it brought home how serious things can be. And then book five is, uh, volume five is them, is uh, Charlie feeling better, but Nick now um, knowing that he, he will be going to university soon and planning on going to the University of Kent, which is near where they live, which is the university I went to. And actually there's a really good um, picture in here of uh, Kent Library, which just captures it very well, very big 60s stark concrete building um and charlie uh, nick saying i want to go there because he wants to be there for charlie when realistically like he's got to think about the rest of his life like yes it's lovely that you and charlie are so in love and you're having such a lovely growing up relationship but sometimes these relationships don't last forever and maybe you need to do the things you want to do and he considers university sort of outside of that and then there's charlie who's encouraging him to do that but also knowing that this is going to come with a struggle for him and a struggle for nick and yeah can't wait for volume six i hope it all comes together beautifully like it will it it really is perfectly done like Alice Oseman well done hats off to you but yeah absolutely great a great day of reading all five of those and I will link the vlog down below uh, for more in-depth thoughts
you can come back now all the all the spoilers are over uh next was a library book um which is called where the heart should be actually i haven't taken that book back to the library it's over there um by sarah crossan uh, it's a ya book uh sarah crossan writes all of her books in verse which is a way that i'm uh, uh, a narrative and a, a, a writing style that I'm always in awe of if I'm being honest because you can have such little words on a page and bring across such feeling or such plot points or such characterization in like a little paragraph at the top of a page and the rest of the page being blank and yeah this was um, set at the time of the Irish famine and we're following a young girl who works in a, um, a house um, of uh richer people and who are feeding their dogs better than she is able to feed her family than she's able to than her parents and her are able to feed their family at home and this is all sort of like shocking and awful but what is going on as well as this is that she's fallen for someone who's visiting the big house someone who's um from a different class as her so there's a lot of stuff in there about class and but it still feels like romantic and it still feels really important and i learned stuff in here about the irish famine like it always blows my mind I, I only did history to year nine when i was at school but i never learned anything about the irish famine all i knew is that there was potatoes that didn't grow like i didn't know anything so i learned more in this book than i'd ever known about the irish famine which is disgusting really oh, oh, on my part as well that i didn't know more about that but yeah she writes amazingly i've got another one of hers coming in at the library um i watched leanne rose's um books Irish books that are coming out in the rest of the year and saw that Sarah Crossan are two books out this year well done Sarah Crossan um, and put reservations on both so that is coming uh, and then the penultimate book I read was Divine Might by Natalie Haynes I've got the book here but I actually listened to the audiobook of it uh, David and I are working our way through the shortlist of um, non-fiction books for the um, Indie Bookshop Awards uh, and this was the first one that I finished um, this is a non-fiction book about uh, goddesses in Greek myth and I've read a few, I mean, I always think that Greek myth retellings are really going to be my bag. And then I read them and I feel a bit bleh afterwards. I've never really loved any of them. And I thought, oh, maybe non-fiction's the way to go. And there were parts of this that I enjoyed. Um, ultimately, I gave it two stars though. So I didn't love, love it. But like it opens with sort of what I liked are the modern references to it. And, and, and that felt new. And it felt like something that I hadn't read before because these references are newer. So, for example, there's a Lizzo and Cardi B um music video where they're dressed as greek goddesses and and like the references and that and how that like how that was featuring goddesses and symbolic symbology and stuff from greek myth so i really enjoyed that and then hercules is my favorite disney film so there's a lot in here about the mu there's a whole chapter about the muses and the muses feature very heavily in the disney film of hercules so yeah there were some bits i liked but nothing enough for me to be like wow um so yeah and i feel like every time i read a book about sort of like greek myth i'm like oh i think i'll put this to bed now because it's not for me so here i am again saying i think i'll put this to bed now because it's not for me and then the last book i read a hugely readable book wayward by amelia hart I gave this 3.5 stars this wayward reminded me of a much readable and less literary bass rock by evie wilde follows very much um a lot of the same narratives and sort of writing structure so it's told from three different women's point of views at three different points in history um 1600 and something 1940 something and modern day um and you're following women who are uh, being mistreated by the people around them be that be that their father or their cousin or their husband or um villagers um and there's a witchy vibe going on for all of them um and they're all sort of linked to one another in each sense but I just found all three perspectives really really readable I keep saying readable but like readable is the word the buzzword here for that book um and yeah enjoyable enjoyable book I mean not much fun stuff happens in here but like there's some comeuppances which are fun um but there's quite a lot of like trigger warnings for sort of like sexual assault and stuff but yeah and I also like this isn't really a spoiler but like one of them sort of has to make her own house and it really reminded me of sort of like going Matilda going to visit Miss Honey and her living in this little shack with like turned over bins and <laughs> for, for seats and having bread and butter for dinner <laughs> that sort of thing like I quite enjoyed that so yes I've given it to my mum and told her to take it on holiday with her so hopefully she enjoys it as much as I did so there we go the 12 books that I read in the month of May 
I've got so many books half finished. So that's the plan for June, um, is to finish off my half finished books and then to get through some of my library books. But yes, there we go. So thank you for bearing with me whilst and going forward. Um, and I will see you all at the end of June um, for more booktube videos. Enjoy your break from me. I will enjoy my break. Goodbye.